with one man with a hidden hate, then add footsteps in underground darkness where no man has walked before. The total reads, High Adventure. This is High Adventure. Here now is the meeting place for those who like stories of hard action, hard men, and smooth women. Welcome, members, new and old. For on this meeting's records is a new story with a problem as old as man. It's titled Barrier, and it's written and directed for the High Adventure Society by Robert Monroe. It concerns a man called Ward Delkin. And here's Ward himself to tell it. Ward? I suppose all men find themselves going in the wrong direction at one time or another in their lives. I suppose, too, that a lot of them never find out they're wrong until it's too late to do anything about it. It has something to do with the way you think. At least it did in my case. I'd worked with John Rockwood for three years at the university, but it wasn't until we took the trip to Dry Ridge that I found out the truth about myself. There were three of us on that trip. John, myself... And Grace. It's certainly wonderful to have a piece of luck like this fall into our hands. Well, I believe I'm actually excited. I know I am. There's no telling what we'll find. A cave that's been closed for thousands of years, maybe never opened before. It'll be good for the prestige of the university, any discoveries we make. It'll be good for your prestige, John. Too bad Doc Evans couldn't come. This is more in his department. You'll do even better. You know, maybe I will at that. I used to play around in caves down in Boone County when I was a boy. Now I'm going back to do it scientifically. I may get claustrophobia. I don't know. You will when you have to crawl on your stomach through a two-foot tunnel for a quarter of a mile. Sounds rough. You didn't expect a picnic, did you? No, I guess not. A large part of the cavern is almost a mile into the side of a cliff. You have to work through the small passage to get there. That's fine as far as I'm concerned. Fine? We'll be pretty sure mobs of curious people haven't been tramping in and out. Oh, I don't think they have if it's that far underground. That's what I mean. Ah, we ought to be in pretty soon. Uh, I'll ask the conductor. Bring me a drink of water, will you, John? Glad to. You too, Ward? No, thanks. He's as happy as a kid on a vacation. It is a vacation for him. Yes, I suppose it is. John's needed one, too. Haven't you noticed it? Did you need one, too? I am on vacation. This is my quarter off. Just started. Oh, no freshman English. (laughs) No, thank goodness. You never seemed like a teacher to me, Ward. Well, it's all right, I suppose. I always thought you'd come back from the war and be a big man in some industry. Well, you know how it is. John offered me the instructorship in chemistry. I wanted to rest a while, so I took it. I wondered. It's a nice country. I like riding along, watching fields roll past. Yes. Don't you? I'm happy. I'm glad you are. I guess we're happy, too. We? John and I are going to be married. Married? At the end of this quarter. We haven't told anyone yet, but you're such a good friend of John's, you ought to be among the first to hear about it. Yes, I I suppose I should. Don't you think it's a good idea? Why, yes, I do. I'm happy for both of you. I'm sure. If this cave exploring gives John a little more prestige with the university, which it should, well, he'll be more secure, and they might even give him a full professorship. Just last night. Sounds rather sudden, but actually it isn't. Oh, excuse me. Don't let John know I told you, Ward. I'm sure he wants to break the news himself. No, no, I won't say anything. You know how he is. Of course. Well, I spilled most of it, but here's what's left. Half cinders, half water. I like it that way. Watch you don't spill it, too. I probably will. We'll get there in about an hour. Then for the big adventure, deep underground where no man has been before. Uh, We'll have to get some equipment first thing. You didn't forget the list, did you, Ward? What? The list of supplies. Don't you have it? Oh, yes, I have it. What's the matter? Aren't you excited? In a couple of hours, we'll be examining what may be a great geological find. Sure, it's fine. Well, don't look so serious. This is going to be fun. Yes. Come on, snap out of it. I'm sorry. I was just thinking of something. What? I... uh, Nothing important. Here's the list. I I think you'll find everything but a bulldozer carefully itemized. Maybe we'll need that, too, before we're through. We'll need lights, electric, if we can get them. String wire into the cave, and then... A 
day too late. Day too late, just one day. Three years of war, then three years of teaching the same flow sheets, just for one opportunity. Then when I get rid of enough shyness to make a decision, it's a day too late. One day. We get off the train at Dry Ridge, bought supplies and rented a car and drove up the road along the river until we came to the cave. The rock fall from the cliff face had exposed the opening, a crooked hole about two feet in diameter. While Grace made camp, John pulled electric lanterns from the car and warmed his way through the opening. I followed, scraping along on my stomach, his boot heels in my face. It was dark, and it was hard going. You notice? We're, uh, we're following the line of the fault ward. Well, well, I can see it. Dust. A lot of it, isn't there? Yeah. It's getting larger now. I think we can almost stand up. At... It's about time. Yes. <coughs> Watch your head. <coughs> ah. Wonderful place. Like a tomb. You mean you don't like it? Why, well, I, I guess it's not what I expected, John. You thought a cave would be like what you see in pictures. With beautiful stalagmites and stalactites all over the place. Beautiful stream of clear water. Well, this could be like that. You can't tell what we'll find. There's water somewhere out here. He won't bother with it now. We're almost into where the big room is supposed to be. Isn't this far enough for today? You're not tired. Oh, a little, but I... The mud, damp rock all around us. Disillusion? <laughs> I suppose so, yes. I should have told you it wasn't a picnic. We'll go back. No, no, as long as we've gone this far, I'm still with you. I'm glad you are, Ward. I don't know of anybody else I'd rather have along. Let's see what's up ahead. Yes. Dust on the ceiling. Mud under your feet. Can you imagine going in here without lights? Bump your head at every step. Be pretty lonely. Pretty low here. Watch your head. Uh, I see it. I don't think you have to be in the dark of the cave to be lonely. No, you don't. It's widening out now. The wider the better. Not like open air, is it? No. Look. Flash your light out that way. It's big enough. Still have claustrophobia? I don't know. Must be a hundred feet to the roof. The whole army could hide in here. I think it has both Mammoth and Carlsbad beaten. I'm I'm sure it's larger. Well, now what? It'll take months to explore it. Yes. Well, let's go back. You're always in a hurry, Ward. I just want to get out in the sunlight again. To see, Grace? What? I beat you to it. Beat me to what? Grace and I are going to be married, so she's my territory now. Yes, she told me. Grace told you? Yes. When? On the train. Well, now you know. Yes, I do. Let's forget it. I never thought she'd take me instead of you. I said let's forget it, will you? I know how you felt. I haven't been blind, but I had feelings too, Ward. Well, I wish you all the luck in the world. I suppose I would be as bitter as you. Listen. What is it? From the roof. Something's falling. Better get out of here. Look at the roof. Quick. It's coming down. Watch it. Whoa. Ward. What made him stay out so long? I don't know. Uh, well, my head. He's finally making sense. What? What's the matter? How do you feel, Ward? Headaches. The doctor said you'll be all right once you came out of it. But what happened? Oh. Yeah. How'd I get here? When I heard the noises from the cave, I got worried and went for the state police. They went in and pulled you out. You guys had no business in there without somebody to look after you. What? Oh, oh, police. We've been unconscious for over a day. Roof came down on us. They'll do it. Limestone caves. Just started to fall in. Noise you made started vibrations. Nobody had been in there before. Yeah, I suppose that's what it was. You or your friend Rockwood should have known that. Where am I now? Hospital. Yes, Ward, in Dry Ridge. Oh. Feel well enough to get up? Yes, I think I can. I'd like a little rest. Sorry, but you don't have much time. Much time? The cave is closing up. We tried to shore up the roof, but we can't stop it. Well, that's an engineering job. You won't be able to get in if you wait much longer. 
Get in. I'm not going back in there. John's still in the cave. He wants to see you, Ward. Still in there? Doesn't he know when he's had enough? He's had enough, all right. Please. I'm not going in there again. John wants to see me and let him come up here. Who does he think he is? I get... I get hit. Please, Ward, John can't come. Oh, he can't. No, mister, and you couldn't either if you had a couple of hundred tons of rock pinning you down. What? His right leg is caught under the bow. They've been trying to get him loose, but there's not enough room to work. They've been drilling around him, but it hasn't done any good. Even in the papers in the city, they're making a big story out of it. I don't know why. I see. I wanted to go in and see him, Ward, but they wouldn't let me. Too dangerous. Somebody else will get trapped in there if we can't stop that seam closing. John sent word out for you to come in, Ward. Well, can't they pry up the rock and pull him out? You can't pry up a whole cliff. You better come if you feel you can or you won't have a chance. The tunnel roof is slipping an inch every hour. Think you can make it? An inch every hour? That's with the shoring we put in. It'd be more than that if we let it alone. But why does he want me to come in? What can I do? You're his friend, aren't you? Yes. It's pretty serious, Ward. We got food into him, water, strung an electric line in to keep him warm. It was dark in there. Got the lights around his chest so we'll get the heat. Needs heat more than light. Well, isn't there anything you can do? We're doing all we can. We were going to amputate his leg, then we could have brought him out. Had the surgeon ready to go in, everything, but he wouldn't let us. If we don't stop the roof, nobody will get in. And John won't get out. Feel strong enough to come along? Yes. Yes, I'll come. in the hospital. They told me. How's your head? It's all right. Come over closer. I can't come over where you are. How do you feel? Leg hurts a little. Did they give you anything for it? Yes, but the pain's still there. The doctor said to take these pills. Put them in my mouth, will you? Sure. I hope they help. It'll be nice to get outside again. Is the sun shining? No, I think it's going to rain. That's too bad. Will you pull the blanket over my shoulder, Ward? It slipped off. Sure. That's much better. Is there anything you need? No, I'm quite comfortable. Food, water. You'd be surprised how much heat you can get from electric light bulbs. John, I, I they think... They asked you to get my permission about the leg, didn't they? Isn't that what you were going to say? It's a quick way to get out of here. Well, I'm not in that much of a hurry. I can stand a little inconvenience if it means saving a leg. One of the workers even brought in a newspaper so I can read. You're famous. Well, not exactly that, Ward. But it's strange seeing my name in headlines. Everybody wants to know if you'll be saved. As if there was any doubt about it. Makes a good story. I suppose that's it. I'm glad you came, Ward. They said you wanted me to. I did. Was there something you wanted me to do? Oh, no. I just wanted to finish our conversation, the one we started when the roof came down. It's not important. Yes, it is. A great deal more so now. Ward, I'm not a youngster that has to be lied to. What do you mean? I know I'm not going to get out of here. I can talk as if I am, but I'm quite sure I won't. You will if you... It may be better this way, after all. And don't try to be optimistic with me. I heard what some of the men said when they were working on me. I can read the newspaper, and I certainly have a sense of logic. All right. Of course, I'll be just as cheerful if anyone else comes in again, but at least with you I can be truthful, can't I? If that's what you want? As I said, it may be better this way. A great deal better than living Lord. How? Well, I suppose eventually I'll have lost grace to you, but this way I won't. I won't ever lose her, and I won't ever be forgotten. Go on. She'll always remember me as a great man, the man she should have married. She may even turn away from you because of it, so I'll never lose her to you. It's very simple, Lord. What about her? I just told you about her. You want her tied to the memory of a man she didn't love. She'll never know that she didn't, Ward. I know you must have thought that everything would be solved for you with me buried in a cave. But believe me, it isn't. I'll have her, and you won't. 
She'll honor my memory. She'll be sure she loved me, which is more than I'd be sure of if I lived. What happens to Grace the rest of her life, you don't care. Whether she's happy or not doesn't matter. It's fine that she'll mourn for you, and you smile about it. Of course I can smile. That's what I want. John, you're insane. Oh, no. I thought about it for a long time. The opportunity came, so I simply took it. Perhaps they'll erect a monument to me. That's more than I'd get as a chemistry professor. She won't waste her life away for you. I'll see to that. You won't be able to stop her. Goodbye, Ward. Give my love to Grace, will you? from Dry Ridge is that little hope is seen for Professor John Rockwood. Listening to police calls? No, it's a regular broadcast. We're talking about John. Well, if the state trooper will let you sit in his car, I suppose he'll... Please, Lord, I want to listen. ...a picture of courage. Reports say he is completely sure he will be saved. As one rescue worker put it, and I quote, I was overseas and I saw men under fire, wounded and dying. But I never saw a man who faced almost unendurable pain and certain death with a calm smile that John Rockwood has. He is a brave man. And to that, we can only add, the heart of the nation is with John Rockwood. In other parts of the world tonight, violence again flared in... Will I save him, Ward? I don't know. They can't take any more food into him. The entrance is closed up too much. I was just over by the cliff there, drilling holes around the sea. How will that help? I don't know. John sent word out to me with the last man who went in. He said to wait for him that we'll be married when he gets out. There isn't any hope, is there, Warren? No, Grace. Grace. Yes. You don't love John. I... Look at me. Ward, please. You knew I came back to state because of you. Oh, I... You never said anything. I know I didn't, but you knew anyway. Ward. You can't let this throw you. You can't let it get us mixed up. You didn't come to see me. or phone. I had to get myself straightened out. John asked me to marry him, and I said I would. I know you did, but that's over now. I can't... Look... You never loved John. All this doesn't change it. Even his death doesn't. No. He's not the man you think he is. He's the finest man I know. He isn't going to die. That's the way he wants you to think, Grace. I thought you were his friend. I am, but he But isn't... I'm not giving up hope. You can, but I'm not. Grace, will you listen? Don't touch me. You're acting just the way he wanted you to. If I am, I'm glad. Something happened to him in there. I don't... Something happened to you. You don't love him. Maybe I do. Maybe I do now more than I ever thought I could. Grace, you've got to understand. I'm sorry, Ward. That's how I feel. I think I'll wait forever for it. Yes. That's what he said you'd do. Go, Pam. Exactly what he said. We're making one last try. I thought you two might like to watch. What is it? We've set some charges on the side of the cliff. All we can do is dynamite and see what happens. Isn't that dangerous to John? He can't live if we don't get food to him. We have to try something, and it won't be any worse. That we're sure of. You coming? Yes. You want to watch it, Joe Camp? Yes. Yes, I do. Over by the river. I don't think we'd better go any closer than that. Well, now we'll see. John will be all right. I hope it works for your sake. You were going to marry him, the paper said. Yes. Yes, I am. All ready, Fred! Wish your pal luck, Del Camp. If you want him saved, this is his last chance, so start praying. I am.
Well, goodbye, Ward. You won't come with me? No. I want to stay here in Dry Ridge for a while. After that, I'm not sure. All right. One of the newspaper men is planning to promote a collection throughout the country. I'd like to stay and help with that. Collection? They thought it would be nice to erect something in honor of John. A monument? Perhaps. Something on top of the cliff to show where a brave man fought for his life and lost. We haven't decided yet just what it will be. I see. I'll be at the university if you want me. John, I... I mean, Ward, I... I want to say something, but I can't. You don't have to say anything, Grace. I do, but... It's like... Like there's something in the way. I know. Do you understand, Ward? Yes. When it's gone, let me know I'll wait. I'm not sure it ever will be. You better get on. Yes. Goodbye, Ward. Goodbye. men and women living the greatest emotional peak in their lifetimes. Their moment of high adventure. Thank you, Ward Delkin. And we'll place your story in the archives of the High Adventure Society and mark it hold for future publication. And at next week's meeting, friends, we're going to a quarter mile of oil-soaked track for our moment of thrilling action. And we're proud to present one of the most famous of the High Adventure tales. It's called Hot Runaround and concerns a man who carried a grudge on one shoulder and death on the other in the cockpit of a racing car. Sound exciting? It is. Hot Runaround, next week on High Adventure. Tonight in the high adventure role of Ward was Lawson's Survey with Charlotte Lawrence, Don Douglas, and Ogden Miles. Broadcast engineer was Dick Waldemine. Sound was by Ronnie Hopper, and the High Adventure Orchestra was under the direction of Sylvan Levin. Remember, next week, Mutual presents Hot Runaround, an auto racing story of High Adventure. Carl Caruso speaking. This program has come to you from our New York studios. We invite you to stay tuned now for Billy Rose Pitching Horseshoes, which follows in just a moment. This is the world's largest network, serving more than 480 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting System.